we had to we had to bully Mark into changing his fit today because we are going to start getting you with some drip on this. No, podcast. the the issue is the issue What's is the issue. The issue is listen. So here's the problem we have. Oh, we have a problem, Max. He he got rejected. We already know it. No, no, yeah. no. Listen, listen, listen. I've got. Solid size breasts. Okay, we have to just address the obvious. <laughs> so no, so the issue is there are certain times <laughs> that certain t shirts don't fit me right because they hug the chest a little bit. Have you too ever hard. tried women's size? <laughs> <laughs> do, listen. You need a, do you need a bra, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> listen. Listen. It's just it is what it is. So that small t shirt was hugging me a little too tight. <laughs> that's all that's it was hugging me in the wrong yeah. you know. No, but we're not even talking about the sizing. We're just talking oh, about the size. Well, I couldn't the wear the other one. He's not yeah, small, but you have, he's a little you, chunky. <laughs> you have more merch than just this t shirt. And every time you come on this podcast, you wear some plain ass whatever, some sweats, and, yeah. and that's it. I'm sorry, being comfy we're, is... We're getting your drip up. Okay. I'm comfy too, but I'm in drip. Well, send me one of those hoodies. Those look nice. Why would I send you one of these hoodies? It's a nice hoodie. You know where to get it from. Well, that's a lot of effort. <laughs> um, I actually don't know the website. Just I know the website off the top of my head. That's crazy. Hey, if you don't know Friends, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah, come on. Friends I, I actually Razo just got too? the new... Yeah, like, that too. Come on. I just got Friends' new uh, cereal collection. Hey, yo. And uh, we're going to do a taste test tonight at IRL. But um, that's fire. It looks heat. Like I need, I need my, I need my D got on a chocolate bar, on a purple chocolate bar. Yo, you know what I'm saying? Keep this off record. We're cooking. We're cooking. <laughs> okay. Well, wouldn't Carla? they go with a more popular D God one, like one with like a hell background, maybe like no, a little, no. Like, you like, know what? No, I don't think no. so. They, yeah, mm, they, that's crazy. They don't discriminate against the uh, traits. They should. Yeah. No. It's, you just have to have a good flavor. Yeah. That's what Co said to me. His, yeah. He's like, "What flavor? Well, chicken do you want? tikka masala. Uh, uh, that might be your flavor. Tikka masala chocolate. <laughs> no, <laughs> gonna do tikka you get the Pringles chocolate. flavor. <laughs> no, he gets vanilla, like extra vanilla. That's nothing wrong like with that. The whitest white, white, white chocolate. White, the chocolate. whitest white chocolate possible. Uh, uh, no, because I'm. I got you know. I got a little tan in me. <laughs> He never gives credit to my Armenian side. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> so, anywho. Max, um, welcome to the podcast. Yeah. Yo, I'm stoked to be here. I mean, I feel like this is kind of like a round two um, because we, we like semi shot the one in New York, but then no audio. So, it wasn't we meant to be. We were yeah. meant to run it back. We were, we were always meant, meant to, to run it, it in LA. Here in LA. Because exactly. you've been spending so much time in LA since. I want to say what, since like the end of last year, yeah. you've been spending a lot of time out here. Yeah. But you live here, no? Yeah, like oh, now. No, no. Okay, okay. I, I, like, I play like, Nomad, but yeah. I've been here since the end of last year. So it's it's been like seven months. The Nomad lifestyle of Web3 doesn't get talked enough about how like, how just it's I think Web3 might be the only industry where no one has a house and they just travel all the time. Like, No, bro, it's it started in it started yeah. in startup culture. Well, like, yeah, yeah, and, and we're talking like work from home culture in like 2020, but like a lot of people have gone back to work. Web three people are still like, nope, we are just out here, we are traveling I mean, because we're here for the tech. Yeah. Like we don't need to be physically in person necessarily all the time. And it's such a global, I mean, it's such a global economy that it's just like you know you're gonna have team members spread out anyways. If you can handle your work, like I guess by all means, like. Do your thing. I, I feel like I'm more like L.A. nomad where it's like I'm based here. I have my base here. I'm probably getting scammed on rent, but I'm always traveling. I really felt that. Yeah. Also, we, we have so many reasons to travel. And I feel like in other industries, like, you know, you have your office and you're like, oh, I'm out of the San Francisco office where for us, it's like there might not be a specific office. So there's kind of these hubs and then we move around. Like, I honestly feel like because of Web3, I know people in every single country. Like, I yeah. feel like I could show up in London, post on Twitter, and be like, I'm here. And, like, eight uh, people yo. would instantly be like, oh, come over. We're doing this tonight. Literally. Like, yo, you didn't tell me you're coming. Like, you know, I feel like it's just like that. The network is – global network is crazy. I went, to, I went to Taiwan, and I went to Taiwan for something not even remo – like, nothing Web3 related. And I met up with a D-God out there just right. because he was based out there. He had, like, bought a T-shirt from me before – and like hit me up. He's like, "Oh, you're how we here. We should link up." And we went to a bar and linked up. And I was like, "I have never done this before, and I probably would have never done this before if it wasn't like wasn't for the fact that we're in like Web three and we were already closely connected through that community side of things, right? Like, because you're probably not just going and meeting up some like random person that you met like I don't know on the internet in a different country uh, unless that like trust has been built. 
No, that's usually the start of a Netflix documentary. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's like you, uh, community is such a buzzword. But in reality, I feel like we actually do have a community to some extent where it's like you are a D God, like you will grab like drinks or dinner with them, even if you don't know them. Where like, I don't know if you're like, oh, I also like collecting sneakers and you're like some random person on the street. Like, I don't know if we instantly feel that bond or like trust at all. Yeah. Yeah. It's like more of being a part of it, something versus just like an interest based like. For sure. Well, that's even like last week we had the event in L.A. and I had a friend of mine that was in town and she had never gone to a Web3 anything. And so I said to her, I was like, just a heads up, like you're going to meet people that damn near live all around the country tonight. Like and she was like, well, why are they all here? And I'm like, they people just travel in this world. Like it's just it's just (laughs) different. Like people are just I'll see the same people in six different states over the course of the next six months. And she was like, like, really? I'm like, yeah. And then she went to it, and then she starts chatting with people. It's like, this person's from this place, this person's from this place. And I was like, that's just that's just a Web3 thing. But, um, but yeah, no, it, it really is crazy. Like, we have this whole global world. You can truly meet people anywhere. I mean, we, uh, you know, we got picked up by Kellen in, in uh, Kentucky. It's like, you know, I met up with somebody in uh, Montana. You know, I mean, it's like the most random places, yeah. too. It's yeah. like not even just like the popular areas. Like, it's anywhere you're at. And that's the cool part about Web3. You can meet people from truly anywhere. And but. it extends out, too, from just like the D-God shit, right? It extends out to just like even if you meet somebody else that's like on Solana, for example, We've all been a part of this like overarching ecosystem of Solana for so long. And we've made connections along the way, made people like made friends on the Internet. We're in different group chats, all this stuff that it's like if you meet up with somebody that's also in Solana somewhere else, like you're very likely to meet up with them because you're both like in the same industry and you have things that you can kind of talk about right away. And I feel like that's so much different, like to your point, than just like, oh, we're both interested in collecting sneakers or we're both interested in like. I don't know, the same like music or something like that, like talking about this crypto stuff and talking about like everything that's pretty much going on in real time is so much different. I feel like the connection for whatever reason, the connection is just so, so different from a community standpoint of like if you're a D God, if you're part of X NFT collection or if you're just part of Solana as a whole. 100%. 100%. And then I think it extends even further. I mean, again, like even when real world activities happen, like obviously last weekend, you know, we had an attempted assassination on Donald Trump. Hey, and yo. the moment I saw that on Twitter, I was like, so what ticker am I buying? And yeah. I was like, it's, it's, it's crazy that that's the first place my mind went to was like, okay, he's alive. He just fist pumped. What's the ticker? And then now, I, it, as soon as I saw the fist in the air, that was when I was like, all right, what's the fucking ticker? Because yeah. this is insane. This might be one of the most insane things like we've probably ever seen. And I, I feel like we were just laughing at it so much. But like that shit is actually nuts. Yeah. Like yeah. A, an attempted assassination. And he's like this like with the with blood on his face. Like I don't even know how to describe how surreal that I feel like seeing that picture felt. Yeah, no, it's, it's so wild. I actually saw it on Twitter first. Yeah, like, me too. The second I saw it on Twitter, I went and I Googled it and there was no news. Like no one knew what was going on. Even like 10 minutes later, it was like Trump ducks and hits his head. Trump hit with glass. Like there was no like there was a bullet and like Twitter had it first. And our whole community was talking about it way before I feel like the masses were. Like I told all of my you know, friends and family outside of at least like crypto. And they were like, how'd you, how'd you hear about this already? And I'm like, I don't know. People posted it on Twitter and, and we're already trading it and like (laughs) making like money off of it. It's like, what are we doing? But at the same time, it's, we're, we're just quick like that. And we have that instant, like, okay, there's some real world event just happened. What's the ticker? Well, and so do you guys, I want to know from you guys, because we were talking about this a little bit before you got here, Sonny, what's your strategy when it comes to like, if you see something happen, whether it's something happens during a debate, whether it's something like this, whether it's something completely different, a viral video like the Hawk Tua, whatever, do you have like a certain strategy that you try to think of when it comes to these meme coins that are inevitably going to launch after a big event, something, you know, worldwide happens like that? Do you have a specific like trading strategy based off of that? I I certainly do. I feel like when it comes to like a very like trend-based trade, you have to getting really quick and then kind of like take like what I do is I I take out some of my initial once I'm already up and then you just kind of let the rest run because you'll see it instantly crash 
Or the other way is it just keeps going up. And that's like what we saw with ear, for instance, with, you know, the whole Trump thing. It's like there was probably like hundreds of uh, Trump tickers instantly launched after that. And no one really could tell like which one was going to be the the full send or which one was going to like actually like run. Um, And then like ear ended up doing like probably the craziest amount. And who would have said ear was like the winning ticker at the beginning? No one. But if you threw a little bit in all of them, took out your initial once you were up on a lot of them and then like for instance kept it in like you were up from like literally even if you put in 0.25 soul you were up like at least 40 soul yeah oh yeah oh yeah no it was it was okay let me ask you are you doing that mostly on desktop or are you doing that straight off your phone i do both i feel like that i feel like that's like a, a very controversial question where some people are like oh i'm like desktop only i don't touch mobile trading I'm I'm always on the go and like if I'm out I'm not gonna sleep on some tickers so like I I always do uh mobile as well yeah I was in mobile all 100%. day I was yeah. at Elefante trading meme coins <laughs> I was like I was like ear stays on two million market cap cool I'm in um saw that ran up to 13 dump yep. that shit expeditiously yep. because because to me the way I look at it is like whenever there's something like that whether it's talk to a whatever I'm like it's only gonna stay relevant for a short period of time because totally. We live in a world where crazy shit happens so quickly that my kind of brain goes to, okay, how long are people going to be talking about this, right? And we saw this kind of earlier this year when, like, uh, Choose Rich went super viral, right? And all of a sudden, the meme coins pumping like crazy. I think it ran to, what was that, the peak? Like 30 million? Yeah. Like, something like that. It was nuts. And then I kind of thought to myself, like, okay, is that going to maintain the virality that it has currently in this moment? Like, no, currently it's at peak, you know, absolute peak euphoria. Does that mean that it won't have some sort of relevance six months from now and things like that? No, I'm not saying that. But in terms of right now, everybody's talking about it. And to capture the Internet's attention for a sustained period of time is so unbelievably difficult. So same thing with that. It was like bought it. I actually probably bought the top on that. So to be fair, I got wrecked, but the, uh, <laughs> so I chose poor, but you know, again, when it comes to stuff like this, like Hawk tour, whatever, I got to that pretty early. It was like, okay, everybody's talking about this meme. It probably has a few days where people are going to be talking about it. Boom. It, it, you know, sold off at some period of time. Same thing with ear stays on. I was like, you know, it's a, it's a funny playoff, you know, kind of with like whiff and whatnot. And so it's a playoff of that. It's also one I don't think people are going to be repping super hard, you know, six months from now, things like that, even during the election. I don't think people are really going to be pumping that one. I think most likely this is kind of how my brain goes is not financial advice. I own none of these. Uh, but like I would think that Trump would probably be the biggest one when it comes to the actual like election cycle, because, again, it's going to go back to the OG like political coins are always going to be the ones that pump during in my mind during the actual like election and things like that. So things like this, which are a little bit more in the moment sort of trades. I go into them super heavy and then I take out super heavy because I'm like, I think it's only going to have a certain amount of virality. And, and at that time period, it's going to pump during that. And the moment it's done, it's going to dump like crazy. So you have to be ready. No, for that. totally. Like you, first of all, you have to take profits because otherwise you will truly just round trip every single thing. And it's like, yeah, it could always go up more, but it's going to hurt way more if it just crashes and you took nothing out. You know, but- <laughs> sometimes it's, it's just like my flights. I take these round trips. You know what I mean? Like you're great at, at merch. <laughs> You're awful at meme coins. I mean, you were awful. Like, oh, no. I wouldn't say awful. I'm awful at the it, at the like to to this point, right? It's like like some of these some of these viral moments I've definitely caught, but I think even outside of the viral moments, like when you think about some of these coins that are like launching so daily and it's like, okay, you have to get in. It's running up to 500k market cap. Maybe you hit a mill. Maybe you hit multi mil, maybe, but it's like it's going up and it's going down. It's like a like less than a day turnaround or like two three days at most, right? And then for this virality stuff, it's kind of similar where it's like all right, maybe like in the three to five day range, like something like that. Um, but those coins being much different than like your longer term plays, right? Like your Mogs, your Pepe's, Maltai, fucking Chonky, like all these all these teams that are essentially like building their meme and building their lore to go beyond any sort of like moment in time right and like for those types of memes i'm cool you know what i'm saying i'm good but for them fucking them fucking like day-to-day type memes man it's hard not to round trip sometimes i'm not even gonna lie i forget about it and then i go back i look at my holdings and i'm like did it again 
That's why you got to take your profits, yeah, honestly. Facts. I'd rather FOMO for selling early, but, like, not be down. No, that's real. And I think there's a this, like, crazy, like, mental... There's something in crypto, especially with meme coin trading, where, like, we would literally, like, act like we lost when we sold and made just that's because Mark. it went up. That's Mark every and it's single like, time. Yeah, like, like <laughs> traders literally feel worse when they didn't keep holding than if they actually lost money and it's like why (laughs) i say this all the time i'm like why are you acting like you lost you made money and people like it went up higher it's like but you didn't lose (laughs) honestly i mean that wp (laughs) i mean you you do have to think about like the the people that like right now right after all of this right Trump assassination or attempted assassination happens. Then you have Bitcoin starts to pump, which is just (laughs) the fact that we like those two things are correlated is so crazy. Like we live in the wildest times, but like, you know, the market looks at it and goes, okay, Trump's pretty much guaranteed to win in November. Okay. Market prices that in. Then JD Vance gets named as the VP. Uh, JD Vance is, you know, holds Bitcoin. From what I've heard, he holds NFTs, which is crazy. I have no idea what's accurate on that. So I'm not going to say which collections. But, like, he holds NFTs, he holds Bitcoin, and so all of a sudden the market starts to recover even more. And now we've seen in the last, you know, few days, we've seen a lot of the OG kind of meme coins that are pumping to all-time high. And so you've seen, like, Mog has gone crazy, Ponky's gone crazy, PopCat's gone crazy. Um, uh, let's see, like, Bonk has started to kind of, um, they're getting closer to all-time high, things like that. So then I start to look at, again, this goes back to my strategy, I look at some of the, like, the OG meme coins that really haven't gone back to that all-time high yet, and I'm looking at okay again these are the teams that are kind of like they're they're building they're doing a ton of stuff in the space they haven't reached their all-time high again so let me look at like you know chonky's one of them i look at guac i look at who else have i been looking at moomoo's i've been looking at um just a lot of these coins that have been around for a minute and bonk obviously just mentioned that but like that haven't gone back to all-time high where i'm like okay cool the other ones have you know and i think these ones are probably up next uh but with that and then even going back into what you were saying there I think the reason why people get so in their head about what could have been is because, man, I mean, again, if you look at Bonk and stuff like that, the early days of trading that, the early days of trading PopCat, some of these other coins, it's like, man, when people start doing the math of what they could have had, it is crazy. And I and I do understand that. At the same time, obviously, you can never be mad about, about taking profit. Because, for example, there was a coin, and I'm not going to specify which one, but there was a coin that last week I was up $12,000 on. Um, I took zero profit, and uh, I'm currently down $1,500. So not $1,500 from my profit point. <laughs> I am down from my initial investment. So you do have to you know take profits and things like that. I took a gamble on that one. I thought it had higher legs. It did not. Um, I was wrong. It is what it is. You keep moving. But I do think, again, when it comes to all this, yeah, it's a little bit more, uh, it's emotional. You know, meme coin trading is emotional. For sure, but... Money is emotional. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it's it's funny because I I actually studied finance as, like, in school, and um, the one thing you learn is, like, you can't be emotional, and that's, like, across the board with just, like, finance in general because money is so emotional, And so it's, like, when it comes to trading, you need to be just, like, so, like, locked in, feelings aside, like, you know, just just looking at the charts or, you know, doing what you got to do. You can't, you know, you can't can't get the emotions in in front of that. Meme cords are sometimes the only only emotions they felt throughout their entire life. You know, what are we supposed to do? Well, you know. You speaking from experience? (laughs) No. Okay. No, absolutely not. Okay. Okay. You know that. Okay. Don't play me like that. (laughs) The thing about meme coins, though, it's so <laughs> funny. You you even were touching on it earlier with, like, saying that we, we live in this attention economy, right? And so it's like we do live in an attention economy. And so when you try to explain meme coins to somebody who doesn't get crypto or meme coins or they don't know what's really going on in this space, I always try to say that, like, they're, they're like, oh, there's no utility. Like, what's the point of just buying a meme or buying this? And it's like, well, that's the – meme coins are entertainment. Like, the utility is entertainment. And – when you when a trend takes off on TikTok, what do people do? They go create videos because they have a chance of becoming viral off of that trend. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're just putting crypto into that trend because there's a huge um, you know, chance that you're going to make it off of that meme. And that's where the like you if the utility is the entertainment and we live in this attention economy and people want people like risk, the risk is so much 
like or the the opportunity is so much higher to make a bag off of a meme coin than it is to go buy whatever the S and P or even like you know a Bitcoin or like Ethereum type investment. It's it's like the risk is so like so much higher, but the opportunity is even higher, and and we like that. I think 100%. it's that. Uh, I, I think it's that dopamine factor too, right? Where it's like within Twitter itself, like you're talking about the content created on TikTok. You also have a bunch of content that's like created on Twitter itself that when it's like you buy that meme coin and then you post about that meme, now all the interactions that you're getting, all the retweets, all the likes, all the comments on it, everything like that, not only are you now financially incentivized, but now you're getting the dopamine with it as well. I think Mog does a really good job of that where it's like, Every time, like, you're tweeting Mog, you're getting mad engagement, most likely. And then also you're financially incentivized because you're holding this token. You believe that it's going higher. And so I think the the best ones are essentially doing that. 100%. And I think you have to factor in, too, it's like, yeah, I mean, we've, we've never had the ability to, like, monetize different, like, products, too. I mean, even, like, for example, I've been holding Mutai for a while now, and it's like, that's something where... The moment I actually had the, the the actual product, the alcohol that I could drink and like pass it to friends and be like, hey, try this. And it's it's one of the easiest ways to onboard somebody is being like, hey, you've tried at this point in your life, you've tried pretty much every different type of alcohol known to mankind. Let me have you try one that you for sure never tried. <laughs> and they're like, well, what's it taste like? And I'm like, there's no way to experience it without me just having you try it like there's no way i can describe it that's going to make it make sense you just have to try it and then they do and then they're like wait so why do you have this and then it leads into a discussion on meme coins and what this is and everything like that and so again i think there's a lot of really cool ways that we're kind of like onboarding people enticing them a little bit that's a little bit different than like you know maybe like shiba would have been years ago where it's like okay cool it's a dog you know whatever if you see a shiba around it's like oh yeah cool i bought that meme coin once like you know whatever but there's really not much that you can do with it same thing with doge like there's not a ton that you can do with it in terms of like other ways that you can bring it up other ways it comes up naturally and things like that and that's something where i mean again just when people come over to my house the amount of times i have somebody bring up like whether it's like the Mao Tai bottle or whether it's like the chonky plushy or whether it's the pudgy toy over there, like people just bring them up on a regular basis. And it's like, it's a great way to onboard people. Sonny, leave it, leave it, leave it. That man loves slapping that. No, leave it. You're like a little child. You know that? No, but you're talking about onboarding and it's like, you're not wearing the merch. Yeah, you don't you're not wearing the merch. Crazy. You're talking about and- onboarding. You wear no merch. You wear these basic ass fits all the time. Fuck it. I don't care what brand last it is. Last F-words. Last F-words. Yeah, sorry. last F-words. All right. You wear these basic brands all the time. We got to beg you to put some merch on. That's not... This like, is, not, this is not the case. Here's the issue. Crazy. Here's the issue. I have so much merch. I'm going to have to do a giveaway at some point. I have so much merch upstairs that does not fit me. And it's crazy. Like, the amount of time... amount of fire stuff that I have that just straight up doesn't fit. You got chonky tees over there still packed up. Like, well, you put, know... Put one on. To be honest... Okay, I was going to, and then you passed no, you were. He's were, acting like well, he has some crazy build wearing? that yeah. doesn't fit any yeah. outfit. What like, was he wearing? He was wearing... He was wearing a was freaking a, gray it, long sleeves with a gray... That's it. Gray on gray. Like gray Gray on gray. gray. Like call me Christian Gray. Vanilla's (laughs) You don't even know who that is. Do you? You're just laughing. Christian Gray? No idea. (laughs) I do. Why do you know who that is? (laughs) Uh you ever heard of Fifty Shades of Grey, Sonny? I've heard of it. Yeah. Never. Great book series. Second and third book are better than the first. First is a bit much. I second the book. No, I read all three. You could also watch the movie. You watched the movie? I actually never saw the movies, but I watched I read the books. Yeah. Are you like getting off to the books? That's, like, okay, okay. Here's what we're not. Like, here's what we're not. I'm talking. confused. No, no. Isn't it supposed to more so be for like, women? For women? Yes, yeah. 100%. But <laughs> the the way that I, this is this is my core belief in life. Anytime <laughs> anybody's talking about something to nauseam, I want to know what they're talking about. Fair. So when those books came out, I was like maybe 14, 15. I don't know. That's insane. Something like that. And I was like, why does everyone keep talking about Fifty Shades of Grey? I was like... And I, I liked reading. I'm a big... I was reading Harry Potter. I've read Harry Potter 50 times. Harry like, Potter to 50 Shades well, of Grey. Uh, yeah, I mean, they were similar time period. Um, you know? But regardless, I was like, people keep talking about 50 Shades of Grey. Let me read it. And then I started reading it. And I was like, oh, wow. This is... Uh, <laughs> He liked it. He liked this it. This is disgusting. We it. get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we, we get it. it. We yeah. get it. You were trying to like take notes and be like, all right, so I got to yeah. I learned a few things. He's <laughs> like, if this is what the women are reading and what the women like, then like I need to know. 
And then he that's probably smart. quickly tried to like implement it and realize, you know what? No. I don't think I'm the character Listen, from the book. I don't. Yeah. So he just started wearing gray outfits instead. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. it. Let me just tell you, Sonny, as somebody who ha- you have not read the books, 15 year old Mark was not thinking about implementing any of the things that I read because they were crazy. Okay? They were. I didn't know some of the stuff. I was like, "What is that? What is that? You did what now?" Um. Yeah. 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 Um. Great insane. book, though. The it's second and third insane. book have oh. far more of a storyline. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 for yeah. Sure. Great storyline. Have, have you read a happy Yeah, I have. Yeah. I have. Yeah, good books. Okay. I'm just happy we were finally able to get your drip up a little bit. Yeah. So yeah. moving forward on this podcast, we're going to, we're going to, you know, get you to be a better, better version of yourself when it comes to drip. Okay. When it comes to fits. Yeah, I'm okay. here for it. It's also, it, it really is such a good onboarding, like. Sonny, you get this. You're literally the merch god, so you truly know oh, like God, why how you, much. Why you got to call him that? <laughs> because like mer- literally everybody wants merch and it's like, why? I used to think it was so stupid. And then, you know, I realized that like physical products are the best way to onboard people. And that's what you were just alluding to. Like being able to, even in um, Austin, wearing the Moo hat around, so many people in Austin were like, what's this orange bull? Like Literally. this relates to me. Like I, I want it. And then it's like, well, what, what, what is the, on that side? Like, why is it dollar sign Moo Moo? And then it's like, oh, well there's a thing. And then, oh, they, uh, you know, uh, I, my friend invests in crypto. Like maybe he can help me buy some. And all of a sudden they were like, so down, even at the, uh, big three games, when they see us wearing the Jeff Hamilton D Gage jackets, they're like, Shit, when they see us wearing the hats, the t shirts, like I know we be getting I know we be getting looks, but it's not even just that. It's like it's not even about just what you wear, but it's about how you wear it. Like yeah. that's just that's just what it comes down to. Well, like, I wear my gray on gray with swag. No. <laughs> I don't even. I don't even think that fit could even be remotely close to some swag. You got to like take a picture of what you were wearing prior to this in your mirror or something like that to just show them how trash it was. <laughs> oh, but, I, I, yeah, I'm trying to be comfy well, on the podcast, okay? bro. It looked like you were in PJs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you couch? coming on the podcast in your PJs? That's uh, that's just what I wear. On the podcast. Anyways, listen. Yeah, hey, no, we'll, it's we'll, about, get, it's, we'll get my drip but, up if you start showing up on time a, and you stop saying the f word as many I, times as you I'd do. I'd be doing that. No, <laughs> I'd be doing no, that. So we'll, we'll, is See, that a honestly, deal? Honestly, it's not even that bad. Is that a deal? Oh, I'll be on time. Dude, okay, all right. Well, and the f words. F word. Well, it's up in the air. He's working no, on it. No, he's we're working on it. Yeah, he's like a little. It's like a little. little it's like a little less. But you know what? Like, no. We anti corporate. No, no. You're gonna say no. He crushes engagement. It is what it is. I don't crush no. You engagement. do. You do. I don't crush nothing. I had to. I we put out a video last week. Yep. I had to edit out how many times you said the f word. Thirty five times. A six minute clip. Wow. Thirty five times. Come on, son. Thirty five times. What's you know how long it took me to edit that? Probably thirty five minutes. Crazy. Crazy. You know, I just do it so I can add no, more no, to yeah. day. No, no. You know Sounds what I'm right. saying? Like, no. why Insane. not? Insane. You know, I it's like you. my little subconscious way of just. All right. So he has to continue en- hearing Enough it. of our stuff, okay? Listen, so Max, give us, you know, we recorded this podcast in New York. Uh, you know, hard part about recording a podcast with uh, like 30 people in the room is it's, it's, it's hard to get the audio right. So uh, we had talked about this a little bit before on that podcast, but we'll do it now. Give us a little bit more of your background. Like, how did you get into all this world? You've also been like, you know, we talk about merch. We talk about fashion. I feel like Max has got to be number one in terms of who I think of when it comes to like fashion in the space. You're always rocking the cool stuff you always have somebody the, clip that the newest the, the newest whatever uh and so you're you know so give us the background have you always been into fashion how did you get give us the whole background who's yeah. max honestly that's it's a Can crazy you donate him some clothes yeah Can it's a crazy background this no the this is height. such an <laughs> important story that i feel like i never even i used to talk about it like all the time and then i feel like i kind of just stopped talking about it um but i used to have my own fashion brand and I uh, first did uh, custom print for, like, businesses, companies, uh, like, a whole bunch of merch. And I started that literally as a kid because I just, like, I was living on YouTube. And I was, like, super into, like, Gary Vee and, like, the entrepreneur mindset. And just, like, being able to, like, create and do whatever you wanted. And I don't know what it was in me, but I just one day was like, yeah, I want to start this business. And, like, it was not a business from day one, but it slowly, slowly got there. And every, you know, sale that I had, like, I put back in and I eventually had enough, uh, you know, like, inventory and enough, um, you know, materials and stuff to be able to uh, actually, like, start a whole brand. And I was like, you know what, I have all this, so let me let me try this. And I just started creating clothing. But the thing that was really interesting, and I grew up in Philly, was that I didn't want to 
like really look like anybody else because it was always like the new sneakers came out and everyone the next day at school was wearing the same thing or the new uh, Supreme, you know, dropped and everyone had it or the new, whatever it was. And so I was like, I was really into streetwear and I was like, how can I, you know, do something where like no one else is going to be, you know, seen wearing the same thing. And so I was doing a lot of like one of one hoodies, pants, hats, anything, t-shirts, whatever it was. Um, It was Max, it was called Max the Brand. And um, I was doing that. I was in a whole bunch of retail stores across the States. I was doing like pop-ups, trunk shows. Um, I loved what I was doing. And it like literally transcended into crypto perfectly because at the time I uh, wanted to, I was like, all right, like now, you know, what's next in my repertoire? I want to learn how to trade. So I was learning, I was watching, again, YouTube videos. I wanted to trade and I uh, wanted to like open an account and I was too young. So I was talking to some of my friends who were trading and um, helping me and they were like, oh, you can uh, buy, you know, Bitcoin, you can buy Ethereum and you don't need to, you know, put your age in. So that's how I got, I got into crypto first. And then when it came to the big like NFT boom of 2021, um, the first thing that made sense to me with NFTs was that I had these, I was doing one of one fashion and like, I knew that if, you know, somebody wanted this hoodie and it was the only one, the, you know, demand is high and the supply is low. So it was going to go up in price. And that was like exactly what I was seeing with NFTs. And I was like, this is sick because I don't need to produce anything. I don't need to ship anything. I don't need to put my hands on any like physical product production, anything, but I could still, you know, buy it and then flip it and trade it and be done and have, and, you know, be up on profit. So like the NFT market really made sense to me, mostly from like streetwear, sneakers, all the reselling that I was doing physically. And then crypto made perfect sense because I understood that like, if you wanted to just like, you know, go invest, it wasn't just like a one, two, three thing. It wasn't super accessible. You couldn't, you know, do it like, just like, you know, in the palm of your hands at the time. And now it's like, again, with meme coins, you can trade them on Telegram. You don't even need to have like a full, you know, like chart in front of you to be doing it. And so that's just where like crypto and NFTs made so much sense to me. Um, And then at the same time, I was like, I was interning at Nike uh, under their marketing uh, department in New York. And I was so like, kind of just like my, my, I was mind blown at how slow and boring traditional fashion was I thought it was like like that was a dream job for me and I was so beyond bored and just like (laughs) mind blown I was just realized real quick the corporate culture is like literally man slow so slow like we were working on things years out things that were really you know innovative and new or trendy that we wanted to push like no way was that getting approved and it was just like how are we going to do anything fun in this space and it really really like turned me off from fashion And it kind of like made me with crypto and the fashion industry, like all at the same time there, like everything that I was feeling was just like, you know what, I'm going to go full force toward the, you know, the tech, the the crypto, the NFTs, like all of this fashion tech. Um, And I'm going to take the risk on it because I mean, thankfully I've, you know, timed my advantage, but at the same time, it was like, I saw this trend coming and I knew that like everything else was just dying and i wanted to you know have nothing to do with it anymore no absolutely i think i think you make a good point too of that like really really slow culture because i mean i like i worked at apple for for a good period of my life and like started realizing the same thing like just yeah. try, trying to take advantage of trends trying to implement things quickly it was just like so slow and i think that's part of what is so fun about crypto and even being in the space and like having access to some of the sickest founders, having access to like people that are running these projects and being able to see feedback like taken and implemented in real time and so fast and like taking advantage of like how the market is moving and everything. It's so interesting to me. Uh, but I think also to your point, it's like it's very interesting how people that come in crypto kind of always come from these like similar backgrounds of like entrepreneurship like had a brand before sneaker reselling um you know like all all these type of like very like niche markets or hustles or something like that you were doing prior to this i feel like we're always like some of the most um like the first wave of people that like really really got into crypto yeah 
hundred percent. And I think that's one of the advantages that we have, you know, is that a lot of people who made a lot of money in, in sneaker reselling and stuff like that were people who were super early to it, kind of knew how to, you know, whether they were running bots or things like that. Like they knew yeah. how to be at the forefront of all of that. Same thing with people who were like, there's a lot of people who have worked in music who are now into crypto yeah. and it's like, and they were at the forefront of trying to figure out how to promote your song, how to get it to out to the masses, how to get, you know, stay on top of the latest trends and things like that. You know, there's a lot of people who are into cars and, and different aspects of whether it's like buying and selling luxury cars or luxury watches, things like that. So I feel like a lot of people who are in the crypto world are people who have had to be at the forefront of like these different niche industries and figuring out kind of how to take advantage uh, or like not necessarily take advantage, but like how to find your like role in that, how to turn profit in that. And now we're all in the space where it's like, we're actively growing this, this, you know, space that we're in. We're also seeing at the same time, like real world, uh, like, um, adoption at the, at the same time. Like even the other day I saw Helio announced that they're doing, uh, they have an integration now with Shopify where if a uh, retailer wants to accept, um, uh, crypto, it automatically converts to fiat and then transfers to their bank account. So if there's somebody that's not a crypto native and they don't want to hold on to the crypto, it, they can still accept it from somebody who wants to purchase using it. And it's like, even little things like that are such a game changer because again, it's like, you think about how we've seen the financial world and like the the means of, of paying for things have changed so much over the years where we've seen people go from tr- just using cash to all of a sudden using credit cards to now we have people using Apple Pay to now you, I mean, I want went to, to uh, Whole Foods the other day and you can use your palm to pay. I, I use my palm to pay Crazy. Whole Foods. Crazy. What do you and mean it, you can use your palm? It scans your palm. Yeah. It's and it straight connects up to your Amazon your account. And, and pays. Yeah. 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 So Wait. like my palm yeah. is connected to my Amazon M- credit Mika card. Mika actually posted a video of me doing it. I'll, I'll send it or tag it in this. Wait, who did you give your palm to for them to notice that it's linked to your account? <laughs> there's just a little <laughs> camera. There, yeah. yeah, like there's just a camera and you hold your hand there and it scans it. Your palm is like all your identity. And like apparently there's no such thing as like two of the same palm. It's kind of like the iris in your no, eye. No, I know that. But I'm like, didn't they have to like take your palm before to like they do, link yeah, it? The, the machine that reads it for the payment is the same machine that you can set it up on yeah. it literally oh, takes like word. five seconds and yeah. y'all just gave your palm up like that huh 100 yeah yeah oh, okay you're for the tech yeah if anybody wants my palm here you go go buy some stuff i mean at, yeah we know foods. you like i would get neuralinked if i yeah. could like you yeah. guys are you guys are worried about like your palm and stuff i'm like if you don't think that your phone isn't already farming you for all of your data like you're crazy and to think that like giving your palm is like such a breach of uh, like, you know, trust or data or your personal identification is like crazy to me because like we, we've been so exploited and exposed and just like drained of all of our, you know, everything. And so honestly, that, that again, like why Web3? It's like sure. we hold on to it. We, we get to like say when our data is used or we don't even have to give our name. We can just make a payment with some wallet address that no one knows where we live, how many kids we have, how many dogs we have, what our house looks like. Like, you know, they don't need to know all of that. And um, I, I don't know. I just think like the the tech of the future is so much more. Uh, it's going to be so much more successful because it's decentralized. But people just need to get over that fear of like we've already been. We we already are the fe- we already are feared. Like whatever you're yeah. scared of for the future probably is already going on it's today. Happening. Yeah, your information's already been sold on the dark web fifty times over. Hundred percent. So it is what it is. But yeah, it it is what it is. But again, it's going back to like there's these these new adoptions that we're starting to see, which is really really cool. And so I think again, I think that's why a lot of people are excited about what this next year is going to look like because now you're starting to see more for travel too. I in mean, crypto like. All different. I mean, I think we're gonna like, we're gonna get to the point where everything can yeah. be paid for in yeah. crypto, which and is you don't even have to cash out, like which is nice. And I think so. Again, it's like finding these different ways for there truly to be real world adoption. Because again, it's one of those, you know, one of the co- most common criticisms I see from people who are outside the space is when you talk to them, they go, "Well, how do you use your crypto? And can you can I can I pay for something with it?" And I'm like. You know, we're not we're not there yet where it's easy. We're not we're not yeah. there yet, but we're close. We're very close. And so again, I think that's where I'll, right now you're starting to see a lot more companies that are building within that. Um, you see little things like obviously what everything that like uh, Solana's announced within the last like two weeks, and just again finding easier ways to integrate in terms of you know there's going to be a it's only a matter of time before you're able to directly pay for something right on X using a crypto wallet, which is going to be an absolute game changer. And we're super close to that. 
being coming to fruition. And so it's like some of these things that we talked about years ago in terms of like, this is where crypto is going to go. And these are some of the advantages you're going to have and all that. It, we're not just talking years away now. Now we're talking months, weeks away. I mean, even, cool. I mean, even currently though, like to your point, like with the Shopify stuff, like they've had Solana pay integrated on Shopify for a while now, now that it's automatically like, sending it to your bank is just like an extra layer of of ease of usage right but like anybody can set that up like currently and have that part of their e-commerce store we have like the paypal usd token we have like Mm -hmm. being able to buy travel through like travel swap or like sleep or book hotels whatever and i think we just consistently keep having more and more things that we can just like exchange crypto for and there's part of it too where it's like you know if you're doing it in a meme coin or if you're doing it in soul or if you're doing it in another asset class that's not necessarily like you paying usdc for it like advantages of that are like hey like the soul you have today could be worth way more in the future and it's the same amount of soul that you have right but now in the future when you go pay for something it's going to get you more than what it's going to get you today if you're spending on it without having to cash it out um but i think it's like i mean while it's like also months away like there's a lot right now right here that it's like we're we're spending on every day um as it pertains to utilizing crypto which i think is incredible there's so much and that the the trend of like you're seeing cashless restaurants stores you know all of that it's like i know like my my parents would be like why like why don't they accept cash anymore and then it's me over here being like, all my money's in crypto. Why is all your money in crypto? Like, you need U.S. dollars to live. And it's like, hear me out here. You're wondering why they're not accepting cash. And you're also wondering why I'm holding so much crypto. It's like, let's let's see what the, you know, real trend and what the real conversation is here. And it's that this is the future. And, like, every, all signs are pointing to it from every which angle. Um, it's just not fully there yet. But, yeah, there's – we're, like – Way more advanced than we were even just a year ago in what you can pay for things. No, that's crypto. a good point too. Like if you're gonna have digital money anyways, why not just like, why not just be in your digital wallet that you hold yourself and is independent to you, um, and you have full control over it instead of just like your digital money also being controlled. A hundred percent. Have you tried back. to like go to a bank and take out money and they say, Oh yeah, I'll take like three to seven days oh, and you're man. like, Well, what are you doing in those three to seven days? Like that's you how know, you know Max is taking out size. <laughs> <laughs> Max got that money. That was her slight flex. <laughs> She's like, "This is some you know I casual hate the 10K. US dollar." Yeah, uh, but no, but Max go, was trying to go to w- buy a whip all cash. Yeah, yeah, and they were like, cash. "Hey, hold up." <laughs> but going back to it though, just like what you were saying, it's like you know when I think back to when I was in college, which was many moons ago. Now we're talking 10, 12 years many ago. But like moons ago, it was, it was many moons ago, my boy. You're um, such a dad. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and the, uh, I was about to make a joke. I'm not going to make that joke. Okay. Anyway, what? um, no, say, it. say so. <laughs> I was just going to say, I'm, I'm your daddy, son. So, but you know, like, <laughs> but, I didn't, say it. but I didn't say it, but I didn't say it. I was going to say, it, but I didn't say it. So anyhow, um, when I think you back, you can't to, even say that to me with a straight face. <laughs> I know because it just doesn't roll off the tongue. Well, regardless, <laughs> when I was in, when I was in college, 10, 12 years ago, I was managing a bar and at the end of the weekend, I would have to go take the money to the bank. And it was like, I'm leaving. I'm like, I would go home at three o'clock in the morning and I had damn near a duffel bag of just cash. Right. And at one point in time, I'm going to have 50, $60,000 in cash on me. It was the most nerve wracking. Oh, you I, thought you were going to get jumped a hundred percent. And I and I hated it because Mark, like, I had to, with it. bro. I mean, Detroit, well, it's with not his just duffel bags. bro. It's not even just could you get jumped? It's dead obvious you were had a chance of getting jumped. I'm leaving a bar at three o'clock in the morning with a duffel bag of cash that I can't even take directly to the bank. I have to take it back to my apartment and then take it to the bank the next day because the right. bank's not open at three a.m. So it was the most nerve wracking. And I'm like, I don't even want to know what happens if somehow I get jumped in this moment because. Who knows? And I just never want. And so it well, was. You probably like, wouldn't have a job anymore. Uh, and yeah, yeah, one thousand percent, one thousand percent. But like you know, it, it's like I was paranoid from the moment I would leave there to the moment I would go to bed, and I would literally go to bed with it next to me because I was like, I, you know, it's like, dude, it's so much money. Like it was, it was scary as all hell. And it's like then you think about the advantages of crypto, things like that, where all of a sudden there's so many more. 
easy ways to secure that, and it's not so dead obvious. If I leave, if I leave a bar like that, and you've got everything stored in crypto, nobody knows that you're leaving with a bag. But if I'm leaving with straight up a duffel bag of cash, it is a little bit more obvious. They're coming for your ledger, yeah. though. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, but you know, I don't carry that on me. So, y'all, do you guys remember when they when they uh, did the necklace ledgers? I yeah, never that was crazy. understood. That. Like, that was crazy. How, I really how, never understood it. Like, I'm supposed to wear my. Like around my neck and just what walk around in public. Like I barely like wearing uh like gold in certain places because yeah. it's just like of course. you know you're not gonna take that risk. But yeah, yeah, that's crazy. That was crazy to me. Yeah. Like this this D God's chain. If you that's know that's me, different. You know? you know that's we repping out here. You know what I mean? Yeah, but they know from People that. People be coming for me. They're not like, to mess oh. with you. Yeah, no, they know. Like a, they know. <laughs> <laughs> like she's got backup. Yeah, yeah. But uh, what else has happened in the last like two weeks? I feel like I don't know. So much shit happens on a daily basis. But then, like, I don't know what else. What else has gone on? We. I mean, we've obviously had a bunch of memes. I think we continue to see how this uh, celebs in the space keep going. I feel like we start to see more a little bit again. Like little pumps been active, posting content, and like Iggy's been doing some more podcasts. Jason Derulo just did some stuff with Mika, like... But they're going to get murdered. I, like, <laughs> yeah, like, it's kind of just, like... I think the problem with the celebrities is they're... Nobody cares. Yeah, like, it's... <laughs> they they have a fan base, but their fan base doesn't know about their meme coin. And so there's, like, a huge barrier between, like, we're buying it because we see that it's going to pump because, of course, it's, like, a celebrity coming in. But, like, how many of those you know, wallets are actually people that like just created a wallet to buy this, like very few. And I think that that's actually like a huge gap right now. Maybe, maybe honestly, like as a, um, you know, like content creator that like, there's a huge opportunity there to educate these people. But like our, our content is so like directed toward the crypto natives. Um, and something that I always like to do is create content, for instance, on like YouTube or on like Instagram for the non crypto natives and explain what's going on in our space. That's like not just for Twitter to be like, you know, echo chamber vibes. Um, but like, yeah, like Iggy launches a token and like, you know, Iggy has a whole fan base, but how many of those people know how to create a phantom wallet, buy it, like trade it, like actually get involved. And so I feel like that's why the celebrity meta is just not going to work because there's no way to like. All, they're not really onboarding. They're just, you know, launching a token for us to trade on, which is like, it doesn't even need to be a celebrity at this point. It could literally be Trump's ear. Like, it, it's like, it kind of, that's still a celebrity, I guess. But, uh, <laughs> chonky. It could be anything. Billy. I mean, yeah. Exactly. Like, it's like, it literally could be a meme. Um, and so, that's where I feel like the celebrity meta is kind of like missing the mark. Uh, but it would be cool. And like, I give, I do give like, for instance, Iggy props, like she's trying to do more utility things with like the phone and like using yeah. like, you know, her token is more of a utility token. I don't know if the utility is necessarily there, but like, you know, imagine if you hold X amount of, uh, you know, mother, you get like a cheaper ticket to her concert, or there's actually a little bit of tie in there where a fan actually feels like, okay, aside from maybe making more money, I actually have some kind of reason or motivation to go download Phantom, set up my wallet, buy crypto, like go the, all the steps, and then I finally can, you know, get some something out yeah. of it, and the token and price goes up. I think it also depends too on their on their audience age, right? Like I think about like Iggy's fan base is probably like late 20s early 30s you know it's like she hasn't no offense but like her music she hasn't put out new music yeah. in forever so it's like it's her audience are not 19 year olds who are going to like find out how to like trade meme coins and stuff like no. that right if you had somebody that's like real popular in that demographic whether it's like i don't know like a i mean straight up a hawk tua like she's popular in that age in that age demographic right now maybe some of these like tiktokers and whatnot maybe like uh you know mr beast if he which he would never put out a token let's be real but if he did the the reason why you know he'd do it right is because he'd come out with video content on how to buy the coin yeah what the you know he'd have right off rip he'd have like utility in terms of if you hold this much you're going to be able to purchase you know my chocolate bars or my merch or whatever at a 20 percent discount mm -hmm. and then a portion of the token is going to get burned 
burnt. You know, like he would have that all thought out from day yeah. one, right? And so I do think like probably the next evolution of a lot of these like celebrity meme coins may be stuff like that where it's a little bit more thought out and less like we're just, you know, it's like their first initial tweets are like, hey, I'm, what, what is all this like meme coin stuff? And their next one's like, here's the CA. It's like, all right, I think we're going to have a little bit more thought out because right now, yeah, it's not the like cash cow for them that it was a few weeks ago. And I knew Salia was getting desperate when he had Bobby Antonoff or whatever her name is. Like she dropped a meme coin and it was like she had... 4,000 followers on Twitter. <laughs> I was like, I was like, all right, like we're, but Salil, we're reaching here. We're reaching. I mean, one, it's Sahil. Like you, you still butchering that. I don't give a <laughs> shit anyways, how to pronounce his nobody name. Nobody cares. Yeah, I don't anyways, give a damn. Like whatever. Anyways. Um, no, I think honestly, it's not even just like the rollout. I, I do think there's an aspect of like not putting like too much utility behind it right at the launch or like, like not trying to promise too much with it because then we get into the whole roadmap era totally. and all that bs and uh and so i think there still needs to be kind of that like level of like why should you hold the coin but partially too i think to to your point it's like you know why would they onboard to crypto if like all you're telling them to do is like hey buy my coin and like my coin is going to pump right like there's so much of an opportunity here where it's like they could use them onboarding to phantom and like try and bag up their fans right like be like yo there's these coins that are like good investments to make these aren't just meme coins these are like proper protocols people that are building stuff hey if you need to swap these are some protocols that you can use here's an exchange here's whatever like you can go out and work deals probably with some of these crypto companies as well if if it's things that you align with but i think there's just more of an opportunity to just like it's more than just like hey come into crypto and like buy my meme coin and buy my celeb coin because you're a fan of me but hey this is actually an opportunity for all of us to like bag up and eat together and i think going that that route especially now and like continuing to double down on that whether it's through content whether it's through platforming the creators the actual ones that we have in this space like we've seen it a little bit but like doing it even more um and just like you know continuing to interact in different ways i think there's an opportunity there to where now it makes sense to for a fan of theirs to want to onboard because it's like okay i can support like someone that i'm a fan of there's opportunities here for me to like bag up and like wow i'm learning like about a whole new thing that i had no idea about before I think you also, though, in that instance, you have to find a celebrity that also is not desperate for cash. Like, I look at some of these celebrities that have dropped meme coins, and some of them, I'm like, I know you're not making money like you used to, and you're probably spending money like you are still making the money that you used to, and so now you got to figure out what this new avenue is. And I look at somebody like uh, Steve Will Do It, right? And he dropped Hero Token, and, like, Steve is somebody that his whole brand from day one has been giving away things, right? He's giving away cars. He's giving away all these different things. He's just straight up giving cash to people, whatever. So I look at somebody like him and I'm like, Steve's content still crushes, has always crushed. He's got a cult like fan base, everything like that. Like he put, puts out content, people watch it. He's still, I think, one of the only few people that's like straight up banned from YouTube. Um, like, cannot, like, they, it's crazy some of the stuff they like did with him. But regardless, his whole thing has always been giving away stuff to people who are either fans of his or just in general, like walking around random places giving money to people. So I look at him and I'm like, I truly think, and I, you know, don't, don't quote me on this. I don't know the guy personally, but like, I, I look at a guy like that. And I'm like, I'm not ultra worried about whether he's straight up, like just trying to make as much money from this. I actively look at it. Like he's probably looking at this, like, Hey, here's another way for me to like give back to people. Cause I'm just going to keep talking about this. Now, Willie, you know, that's the big thing. You still have to see. Will he keep talking about it six months from now? Will he keep talking about it a year from now? I don't know that that's the hard part with the celebrity tokens and why I still kind of err towards I'm a bigger fan of tokens that don't have a direct person affiliated with them because, yeah. again, a coin like PopCat or, you know, whatever, where it's like people are just actively posting about it on a regular basis because of either the memes or because of like the, you know, just honestly, the memes. Like, because of that, those tokens, I don't need to worry about is there going to be a day where somebody just stops posting about it? Mm -hmm. And with a celebrity, that's the one thing that we still have to wait on to figure out is like, are they going to talk about this when crypto's not popping? And like, we know we're going to go in periods of time where crypto's not the number one talking point and things like that. And so, you know, 
does that person truly actually care about this long term? Let's be real. For the most part, most people, the answer is no. So we have to figure out who are those people that are actively wanting to stay in this for the long term. And those are people that, you know, again, I will, you know, buy their meme coins and stuff like that. For the rest of them, I'm going to buy that shit and dump it expeditiously. And that that's why I think meme coins are so popular right now for especially us who've been in this space for long enough because it's like we got so burnt out of the like NFT roadmap like okay if the founder's not here then the project's a rug if you know people aren't if they're not you know launching something new tomorrow like then we're bored like it kind of is just like the meme coins is just like the epitome of like there is no utility I love you and like that's why the price is going up yeah bars yeah also crypto doesn't need saving like to that whole hero point like we don't need any saving from you celebrities. Like, yeah. I promise you that. So, like, it, that that was the only part of it, of his personal narrative that I hated because it was, like, he was trying to act like he was coming in and, like, saving crypto and, like... I don't think that was his attitude. That was his attitude. No, that, he was, literally, that was... He literally made a video talking about, like, crypto, I'm coming to save you with my hero token. I think he was... He, like, dressed up as, like, a superhero and was, like, going around giving money to people. I think it was more of a play off that. It wasn't like the Andrew Tate came in and said, I'm saving crypto. All right. Well, anybody that thinks that they're coming in saving crypto, we we don't need y'all to save crypto. If you want to contribute and you want to help push this forward, like that's a completely different talking point than coming here and thinking you're saving anything. Like, yeah, Steve's not, not that he's not that cocky of a person. Not. I don't think that was his. Uh, you know, him personally, you texted him. <laughs> no, but that's not, <laughs> not his vibe at all. Not his vibe, though. <laughs> not his, not his. <laughs> if you want to save crypto, you could be a regulator. Like, I think that's the only saving that we need right now. Yeah, I mean, oh, man. Yeah. But uh, I mean, outside of that, you know, interesting times per usual. Uh, we got ETFs coming up. Uh, very quickly, which is going to be another exciting point. We got a wild next like five, six months ahead of us. It is, uh, it's going to be crazy. Uh, the end of this year is going to be fireworks. This is what we waited for, this yeah. is what we prayed for. Yeah. And for times like this, <laughs> okay, we can't, we can't even quote Meek anymore. It doesn't hit the same. No, did he? Yeah, yeah, that really. I can't listen to his music anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I can't listen to his music anymore. It's tough. I had to change it the other day. I was on a run. Meek came out. Yo, cut like, this. Got cut it. This. What's uh, what song did were you listening to? Um, that, that. used oh. to pray for times like this. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm terrible with song names. I don't. Um, I just. I don't know. I don't think I could cut that intro off. Like it's. It's still hype. I know like, it's, it's so still fire, crazy. but like Diddy. <laughs> I don't. I don't even understand the reference. Like, oh, you don't know their relation? No. Oh yeah, there's there's that's not a podcast. That's for off off record. Oh, <laughs> yeah. There's some there's some correlation there. Not like so. Not, Meek is not dropping a meme coin. It wouldn't shock me actually if he dropped one at some point. <laughs> no, that it wouldn't, wouldn't shock me if anyone yeah. drops a meme yeah. coin at this point. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I'm waiting for Britney Spears to do one of her crazy dancing videos oh, and then be yeah. like ticker. <laughs> like, <laughs> do that again? <laughs> no, I'm not bro. <laughs> He's been practicing. Yeah. Anytime anybody says people Web3 are unhinged, I'm like, hey. <coughs> you ever seen Britney Spears dancing videos? Okay. <laughs> but anywho, I would buy her ticket. Well, damn. Okay. Oops, yeah. I did. Oops would be all. Oh, oops would low key be fire. <laughs> I hate that I. You might be on to something here. I'm not <laughs> like going to lie. Listen, Britney. Ticker oops Brittany. would Brittany, be if you're insane. Out there, Ticker if you're listening. oops. <laughs> Britney, if you are tapping in on this. On this oh podcast right here, Ticker Oops you are invited. Crazy. You can come on the podcast, and we can launch Oops. Oops. Oh, God, I hate how fire that is. That is. Oh, man. O- oops, I did it again. <laughs> oh, there's so many things with that. Oh, man. Um, anywho, Max, what are you most excited for for the next, like, like I guess in a year a year from now, like, what do you want to see yourself keep building in this space? Are there certain, like, goals that you have with all of this? I guess, what's your, what's your thought process on all this? Yeah, I think more, like, fidgetal products because it's, like, even, like, you know, Cooties Ring, shout out Cooties. It's, like, there's, there's so much real world ways that we can tie what we're doing digitally to the physical world that's going to make it all have so much more sense um and then of course like a lot of what i'm doing with like xr and vision pro like all of that next next level of like entertainment and content and media um that combined with again like having crypto so much more accessible usable like IRL, just tying all this stuff together to make the physical better and not just the digital because i feel like we've already cracked the code on like you know, just like printing, you know, 
thousand X's on, uh, you know, pumped out fun. But it's like now how can we use some of this tech and implement it into the physical world? Bring more people in um, is really important. And then uh, just kind of creating more of this like IRL presence of everything um, and tying it just to like more and more different businesses and ways that we can, you know, innovate like across the board. Uh, that's like what really excites me. And like any way that I can like be more involved in that is what I'm going to do with deep pins, RWAs, digital products, like even it sounds so silly, but like NFC chips using it for like authentication and verification. Um, even like IRL events that we don't even need to like talk about the tech, but just like doing more offline, um, I think is really important. And that's kind of also like what's kept me in this space for so long and that's why I kind of want to like find a way to keep building on that more and more so it's not just like okay we have these you know platforms we have crypto we have all these things online but like what about when we go outside like what what is there that we can possibly you know tie this stuff into to make it all you know just a a better uh way of life I got a question for you off that the the Apple Vision Pro, when when those launched, you and Mika and a few other people uh, were, Dre Milley, were rocking those nonstop. I, I was seeing the Apple Vision Pro everywhere. I'm seeing you guys walking at Runyon Canyon. I'm seeing you guys at IRL Alpha. I'm seeing you guys with the Vision Pro everywhere. A few months later, now we're, now we're in today's day, I haven't seen it as much as of recent, but give me your like honest thoughts on the Apple Vision Pro. What are, you, what are the pros? What are the cons? Like, Where do you want to see that kind of tech go? Yeah. And I guess like, what are your biggest issues with it right now and things that need to change in order for it to kind of get the adoption that you're probably looking for? Yeah. First and foremost, um, it just has to be smaller, lighter, faster, cheaper, like uh, that that's how you onboard more people. I got we a, saw it with crypto. a Solana edition. Yeah, like literally, we saw it with crypto. It's the you Solana know, like Pro? you can't expect everybody to come in if it takes ten years to create a wallet. If it takes ten years for a transaction to go through. If it takes a thousand dollars to pay for fees for a transaction to go through. Like it's just not going to happen. Um, and we've like you know it, like made so much progress on all of those points in crypto. And so I think that that's where it'll head next. But um, I would say like the the biggest kind of like negative to it right now is almost like having an iPhone before anyone had an iPhone. It's like, who are you FaceTiming? Who are you iMessaging? Who are you sending emojis to? Who are you using any of these apps for? Um, Like yourself. And so that's where Vision Pro is kind of like lacking right now. Uh, The devs and, you know, like engineers and uh, people that are building for it need to keep building. Um, I think like startup and just like you know investment wise like they could be putting a little bit more energy and effort toward it a lot of the businesses uh like big brands had uh vision pro like either uh like applications or experiences being built and then they saw the adoption of the actual device kind of starting to like go down and so they've kind of like closed off on a lot of their brand a lot of their plans um to like launch things on vision pro because like what's the point of launching something if there's only you know so many people in the world that are going to be able to experience it like the ROI on that is just not positive so that's kind of where like the I would say like holes with uh vision pro are right now but it doesn't mean that this still is like dead because I would say when you look at like your phone right now you're literally constrained to your phone and everybody lives on their phone uh kids want to find something that like or maybe parents want to find something today that gets their kids off the screen and it's like well how are you going to do that if there's no possible way for them to like have this digital connection um outside of the screen that's where I'm like super confident that XR will take over because it takes the constraints of the, the screen out of it, but yet we still can feel digitally connected because kids today are like, I care more about my, you know, Roblox, my Fortnite skins, my, you know, digital identity, my PFP, like what I'm posting on social media, all this digital, digital, digital. They don't even care what they're, you know, wearing IRL because all that matters is what they go home to and what their avatar looks like or what skins they have or what their, you know, all their like digital, um, like, uh, assets look like kind of. Um, and so to like bring that and combine that trend with where we are today, XR is the only way because it's the only technology that allows you to see both the physical and the digital at the same time. And that's the last thing I was going to say on like the negative of vision pro right now is there's a huge, um, like, miscommunication or just like no understanding that the 
Vision Pro has see-through and that tech is here today. People see a headset and they automatically think of VR, which is when you're only in the virtual setting and you're, you know, like playing a video game or doing something completely virtual and you cannot see the outside where Vision Pro um, and the new MetaQuest are the first products that you can actually see through. And I think that that technology is a little bit slept on, or at least the understanding of that technology is because that is where we are headed. Like the whole point of this is to get off of the screens. Like the phone is not going to get better. Look at the past 15 iPhones. Like the, the, it used to be like, oh, the new iPhone's coming out. It's so new. It's so this, it has this feature, that feature. And now you look at it and it's like, what's new? Nothing. Because they're not investing in that anymore. They are trying to build it on these products that you can see through. And that's like exactly where all this tech I think is headed. Yeah. I mean, I, I could even see as you were talking about that, I, I like you mentioned Fortnite skins and I was like, God, I could see a world and I don't think this is far off. Maybe like three yeah. or four years from now where you're wearing sunglasses, I'm wearing sunglasses and like you've purchased a skin on their like marketplace or whatever. And if I look down at my own hands, it's like it, it builds in like whatever skin I bought. Maybe I bought some like, yeah. you know, aqua, whatever. And so I have like, I, I don't know, like I was trying to be Aquaman. Aquaman. <laughs> so I got an Aquaman skin. Even going. Artifact though is like, there's a lot of speculation about Artifact and what they've been doing. And I think a lot of their FUD, honestly, is that like there's just no tech to deploy what they're really thinking and what they really want to build. Um, there's a lot of other businesses and brands that are in the same boat where it's just like once the, the tech and the hardware is there uh, to actually deploy it on, it's all going to make so much more sense. Sometimes you just need like a catalyst too. like you just need something that it's like, why is somebody going to use this tech? Like I remember using the Vision Pro with you for the first time and it was literally like I'm watching Steph hit threes over here and like I'm kicking it with everybody right yeah. here in my goggles. I was like, oh, this is kind of lit. Like up close and personal, right? But I think back to, you know, uh, like the almost like essentially the iterations like Apple products have to go through. Like when I was working there, I remember – being super, super early on into um, Apple Pay and just using digital cards. But at that time, it was like the only people that were taking it was obviously the Apple Store. Um, and like all of us internally obviously have it set up and things like that. But I'm over here thinking like, oh, I could use this all over the place. I'm going to like a gas station or something. They're like, oh, no, we don't take Apple Pay. And it's like, I don't know, for whatever reason, I was so inclined to just like not even carry cards on me anymore. And then it was just like, well, fuck, like I can't use it. <laughs> it's like I literally exactly. can't use it because it's not implemented. And then, you know, like hate to say it, but like everything that happened with like COVID and the pandemic and like these shutdown, that was kind of a catalyst to implement all this cashless transactions, all this contactless pay, everything. And now when you go anywhere, everybody takes yep. apple pay like everybody takes apple pay or some sort of contactless payment whether it's with your card whether it's with your phone whatever and so for me it's like when when thinking of things like that sometimes you just need that what is that like catalyst going to be that makes people like s simply just start using xr way more simply start using something like the vision pro way more and it's like obviously the product has to get better to your point like cheaper lighter like easier to use more accessible but there's also an aspect of like the why and like what the reasoning behind it is. And so I don't know, I'd be very uh, curious and interested to see when that when that finally like pops up. That's going to be wild. That's going to be wild. We got some wild times ahead of us. With that said, Sonny, you have a, you have a flight. So we got to we, we do have to cut this off. Always catching catch flights. Yeah. Always catching flights. What, was that? what was that? The, the catch catch flights, not feelings, BS, Sonny felt you know, that. 2011. 2012 Tumblr days. He's going to tweet that out at some point. Yeah. Catch flights, not feelings. Hashtag merch god. Hashtag, you know. Mark, you do the worst impressions of me. Like, I'm not this corny. I'm only corny through your impressions. That's crazy. That's crazy. I think he called you corny. Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. Mark is the corniest person I know. Aww. That's crazy. You guys have the best bromance. It's cute. He gets drunk sometimes and t t texts me and tells me he loves me. <laughs> I believe it. Never. Gets Never. a little sauced up, FaceTimes me, gotta tell me. <laughs> it's adorable. Hey. Come here. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Did you ever air out or shit? Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, Max, earmuffs, earmuffs. Bitch. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Do you know which video that is? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Ash, what? Shout out to Red Sky. <laughs>
I think he died. Jesus R. Christ. R. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Oh, my gosh. He would have been perfect to launch a meme coin. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Bitch. I love you. <laughs> Give me some waffle fries. <laughs> you got a lot of uh, meme ideas. Yeah. You get cooking over there. Yeah, but Mark is a meme. Mark is literally a meme. Like, he's he's been, like, building up to this moment in time within crypto where he's just, like, now just, like, yeah, put my face everywhere. I'm a meme. Here's a picture that you could use for a meme. Like, put me everywhere. You just want to be, you want to be a meme token. N- not not Mark, though. Mark is lame. Like Yeah, you, we know Mark is lame. Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> not my name, okay? The, hash, the ticker, okay? <laughs> Get it. Ticker, no, get you it. Not everyone had kind of uh, two X's in their legal name. You, you, you oh, is that person. really your real name? Yeah. Oh, with two X's. I always wondered what your real name was. Yeah. Well, my first name's Sophie, but my middle oh, yeah, my yeah. middle name is actually Max with two X's. Really? My is whole there, life. Is there a story there? Um, my parents wanted to name me Max, and my grandfather's like, "You cannot name my baby granddaughter a boy's name," and so they were like, "All right, well, we still." She's still Max, and we still like that, so we'll do it as our middle her middle name. And I don't know why they added another X, but people, a hundred, especially in crypto, people are like, "There's no way that M A X X is your name." But like my passport, my ID, it's literally Max. Damn, and it's been my name That's my whole fire. life. Yeah, wow. That's actually super fire. Wow. All credit to my parents. Shout out to the fans. I love it. Mark is my real name. Yeah. There you go. For yeah. real? Yeah. No way. Yeah. Born, damn. Named after damn. my uncle Mark. Docs also born, all. On, born on the same day. Would have never known that. Born on the Crazy. same day, my uncle and I. Who so, would have thought? Yeah, that's where Mark comes from. You know? I think people think Mark Kohler is a made up name. They do. They're like, Definitely. what's your what's your real name? <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> Jesus oh, Christ, man. Mark. All I right. have to make things weird. This is the point where we cut off the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Anywho, sure. uh, Max, usually I have a present for, for people on our podcast. Um, but to be honest, I I feel like I've literally given you everything. I possibly he said could I've given have. you enough. You've already yeah, drained me. It's, it's, honestly, it's not even it's enough. I don't think I could give you anything that you don't already own at this point. Like honestly, we just keep cooking um, up, you know, new merch, cooler stuff. It literally, and, you know what? Like, I got some chalky stuff for you. We'll get you. We'll get you some stuff there. Do you have a chalky plushie? I don't have a plushie okay, actually. Here you go. <laughs> not not that one. Not that one's mine. That oh, one's, no. that one's mine. We'll, we'll give for, you, the, for the sake we'll give of the you, pod, this yeah, is my gift. For the sake of the pod, yeah. but yeah. we'll give you a brand new one out w- once the this pod. This is Mark's ran down one. Yeah, yeah. We don't, we don't, we don't want to give you the ran, ran down the one that he's been using and that's, stuff. That's yeah. crazy. We don't want to give that's you my that guy. One. We just we you know <laughs> we know it's your guy. <laughs> yeah, we know. Okay, uh, we know. You guys are sick. You guys should be arrested. Anywho, this is the podcast. Um, thank you, Max, for coming yeah. on. Oh, and, thank uh, you, guys, and and running this back with us. Uh, yeah, I think it was just always destined for it to happen in LA. For so. sure, there it is. It's a good time. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Wait, name a ticker, any ticker. I mean, it's kind of obvious, Moo Moo. Oh, what's obvious? What? Why is it obvious right now? It's just there's only one bowl of the. the I know, bowl but run. you're literally holding a chalky. <laughs> well, I was throwing it's this. Ob- it's obvious. Well, you can okay. do chunky too. Okay. All right. There it is. Yeah. Um anywho. Um Name a ticker, Mark. Uh type shit. Please don't die. <laughs> Please don't die. Oh my god. <laughs> Listen. It's like that. Oh, dude, I no, I I loved I loved that ticker from moment one. The moment I saw it, I was like, this is sick. I got in at like a hundred cakes. So I was like, this is epic. You got mob ties? I do not. Damn. Um it was running up at the same time. I was depressed by what I was experiencing. Uh, but then type shit ran up to 4 million. And I was like, this might go to 100. And I'm going to be rich as all hell. And then uh, it did not. It did not. It, it did. They were like, no type shit. I woke up one day yeah. and was like, who murdered my boy? <laughs> um, and so, anywho. Um, well, shout it out happens to the, to the best of us. Yeah, shout MLB, out to the mob. You know what I'm saying? So. There it is. Okay. All right. We're done with this podcast. We're going to keep going. So, Sonny, go get on the plane. Okay. Bye.